everyone, and welcome back to our Lips Unsealed podcast. Today, we welcome back to the pod, Alif Item. Hi, Alif. Hi. Nice to see you guys again. Yeah. Good to see you again. Oh. Yeah. It's your second time on here, right? If I'm not mistaken. Might be our first, second time guest, I think. Yeah, it's an honor wow. to have you back. I yeah. think it was special. I know. Yeah, you said. <laughs> and, you know, we're welcome. She, Alif just got off a whirlwind tour of travel. Um from the states down into uh the uh, new zealand and australia and kind of that area of the world yeah yes yeah it's been really nice it's been our sort of like dream to be able to travel certain times of the year and still sort of work and this was our first trip that we've sort of practiced that and it worked out really good and that part of the world is just beautiful and uh weather was very cooperative so it's been fun a little you know, draining, you know, with the time difference and balancing work and fun, but, and the jet, jet lag has not been pretty when we came back, but um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're well adjusted now to back to US, so. Good, good. I'm sure it was well worth it. <laughs> yeah. It was, yes, yes, definitely. Everybody, you know, who has a chance should definitely uh, go visit. It's it's really gorgeous. It makes you just sort of like feel small and you realize how, you know, small you are in the grand scheme of the world. You know, it's really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I was actually just talking about making a bucket list the other day. So maybe I should put that on there as one of the items. <laughs> yes, yeah. for sure. Yes. Well, speaking of traveling, um, you're also big into traveling to different events in the community, isn't that isn't that right? Yes, I mean, I'd um, I'd like to uh, definitely a couple of events. I've been traveling a lot more, but this year specifically, it's going to be my first time attending Dynamics Con in May. So that'll be sort of a first time going to that particular conference. I'm a speaker, first time speaker, so I'm very excited about that. And um, and I, you know. Um, Every year I try to attend a user uh, group uh, summit and um, Bobby and I were also in the planning committee for that. So we get to work together and also uh, obviously be a part of the event as a part of the planning committee, but also sometimes as a speaker and sometimes um, also as an exhibitor as, as well. And I really love the, um, the these events because it allows us to really connect with each other first, you know, but also connect with our larger community of customers and other people who are inter interested in D365 world. Someone was detected at your front door. Oh, no. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's that trying to break in. Oh, it's not so much trying to break in. It's just hopefully it's just a delivery because we, we, we don't want to have a security issue going on. Yeah, I'm going to be like pulling away on this podcast. Yeah, it'd yeah, be, like be like Taken, you know, like one of those movies where we see a leaf get pulled away and we have to start the process of finding her. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. At least there's evidence here. You yeah, know. right, yeah. And um, this year I also have been um, in started to be involved in the local community. This has been a little bit of a, there's been a gap after obviously COVID for us to be able to meet in person. And I mean, I live in Dallas, so the DFW Dallas Fort Worth area, North Texas, uh, uh, has a lot of D365 customers. Uh, there's a great Microsoft community here that offers their um, offices for a lot of our meetings. So we've been having a lot of like regular meetings and get to know uh, people around the community which, you know, helps me to do some of the things that are outside of my job. So I, you know, people sometimes come to me and they're like, oh, um, I'm having this problem in my D365. I need a contact at Microsoft to connect to. So mm. I like introduce them. Or if I have a young, you know, student from college that may be one of my kids' friends or something like that, and they're looking for an internship, then I'm like, well, I'll introduce you to these companies that may be looking for an internship. And I'm also part of an organization, we'll probably talk a little bit about it, um, like tech, it's called Tech Fluent, um, which offers D365 uh, career training to people. And yesterday, actually, I was spending some time sending that information to some of our high schools, mm. community colleges here in the Dallas area. So those are some of the things that I do sort of like outside of my sort of work umbrella that gives me 
pleasure and satisfaction and making sure you may making a, a creating a bigger community around uh, d365 and specifically training yeah you know we love community and you mentioned dynamics kind of live which is happening right in my backyard yeah so you'll be up in denver which is awesome you know may weather is typically really really nice it'll be you know really mild mild, mild temperatures during the day and cool enough at night that it's just kind of you know pleasant and uh, I know they got a lot of good good stuff planned for us um, at the event. We'll be talking about that at a, at a future one. And the Dallas user group is awesome. I feel like it's my second home user group. I told we had Quentin Hunkin on last uh, uh, episode. Uh, he's a Microsoft employee down there in Dallas, uh, and and he uh, came on. We were just talking about the, the user group a lot there, and and yeah, I love the energy. It's built up really quickly, and it's just a fun group and and a lot of good content. So I've been to. I think this is three or four different meetings now with the yes. Dallas user group, just because it's an easy flight for me from De Denver and really appreciate getting down there. Yes, yes. And I think what makes it a little bit different is it's there are a lot of customers who are just sort of willing to get themselves out there. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes in the user community, it, it's a lot of it's driven by Microsoft or the partners, and that can make it a little bit you know, less likely for, uh, you know, different voices to be heard. What is interesting here, I don't know what the reason is. I think some of it is just a number of D365 customers and some of it is just personalities and people wanting to be involved. Um, we get a lot of customer, like customers wanting to host events and things like that. And that makes it a little bit, you know, more inclusive and people uh, want to be a part of it. So that's, that's a good sort of like start. We've had multiple events. We're planning also a regional event in September. It most likely will not be in Dallas right now. We're planning on around Austin, which will be also fun for us. Yeah, yeah. To travel too. So if that <clears throat> happens, where that's one of the the future events that we have. And just like you mentioned that the Dynamics Con will be in your backyard this year, Summit is going to be on a little bit of our our backyard. Not close necessarily enough. exactly in Dallas, but close enough. It's going to be in San Antonio, which will be a driving distance for us. So I'm excited about that. And we are, as the planning committee, just about to start our journey to embark in picking the sessions to be presented for the FNO. So we have a great number of sessions submitted. So I'm very excited to just sort of like go through that process again yeah. and uh, give room to new speakers, you know, um, and uh, some customers to be able to present. Those are some of the higher things in my priority list as far as uh, the selection process. Yeah. Yeah, no. oh. yeah, we're excited to see. We sent um, a few sessions over, so it's always fun to see who gets to present this year and experience Summit for the first time from our group and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, so you always, mentioned TechFluent, um, and uh, just such an important organization. I wanted to take a little bit more time to talk about that really directly, um, because you and I, Alif and I, are like business partners almost. We're we're in so many committees, <laughs> and, like, crossing over. Um, yes. But it's awesome. I love I love working with her. Um, but we've been when helping out, you know, to plan uh, out the curriculum for the FNO folks uh, who will be signing up in the, the that cohort for this next. Um, um, yes. Enrollment for TechFluent coming up in September. So, yeah, we'll be sharing that information out uh, when we drop this podcast. But let's yes. talk a little bit about this process because it really ties into your business as well. A lot of what we decided to do you know, it involves really easy to digest training for these different modules for this ERP. And so when we looked at how to make it attainable for the folks jumping in, it really involved a lot of what you do so that, you know, we're you know, excited to hear from you on, on kind of that learning path and, and how you went about setting that up and how it kind of, you know, pushes into what you do on a day to day for the folks who are using your training. Yes, for sure. Um, so TechFluent is basically an organization that is uh, trying to create more diversity and uh, providing opportunities to people who may not have the opportunities to get into a D365 career. Um, so they, they are building this cohort, and last year it was a lot smaller, but this year I'm also part of the board, and uh, they're taking a lot more applicants, and these applicants are going to go through a certain training and mentoring process 
to ultimately become um, people who can find careers in the D365 world, whether that's in the consulting area or maybe working for customers. So as a part of that process, you know, what I do with my company, um, I, I felt like, and that's why I was involved in that uh, organization, I felt like it could provide value and it has a room in that in that uh, space as far as training someone who does not know, know anything about ERP or D365, how to go about learning about particular product. Um, so my company, what we do is we provide um, self-serve online training to various uh, D365 products. And if um, a, a simple example would be is let's say you're a company who is going to go through a D365 implementation. You just uh, made the decision or you're about to make a decision and now you have to embark into this journey. There are obviously many training um, tools out there that, is some of, that are provided by Microsoft, but a lot of the times customers are looking for something that's a little bit more role-based and in, in the smaller chunks. So what we provide is um, instead of creating large um, materials, we have created small videos, uh, which we call them micro courses. And uh, each video teaches a particular skill to the learner. And our perspective is always from the end user side, uh, because as consultants, you know, Bobby, you have probably a lot of experience in this too, is that consultants tend to focus a lot on configuration, like how to make D365 work. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the end users, don't necessarily care how they, you know, the, what the journey was to get there, but they're more focused on how am I going to do my job? So yeah. that's why our training is a lot more like, okay, well, you have to pay an electric bill and what do you do? You know, or you have to like a, create a customer, consumer customer. So what do you do? So these are these small videos allow us to teach these skills to the learners, which are welcomed by end users because it gives them not only the D365 knowledge, uh, but also sort of like the background information about how this fits into my day-to-day -day job. And I think that's why it's a good fit also for TechFluent because uh, those learners, those uh, part of the cohort, they're new to sometimes to ERP, sometimes to D365. And it's, it's a nice tool to get them better understand how a company works, how business processes work, and ultimately how the software works, because technology is only just as a part of what we're trying to convey to the learners. So uh, we have customers from um, different industries, um, and we work with specifically with Microsoft, different partners. Um, we're very sort of like a friendly in the way that um, we are working with the different partners. Obviously, some partners um, like the idea that we take the training out of their to-do list uh, and some partners they don't like that and in those in those cases they provide the training themselves but I would say 90% of the time uh, partners are thrilled that um, the training is not a topic that they have to worry about and the customers engage with somebody else to take care of that part. Yeah and that's why I made it a perfect fit for TechFluent because it was these micro courses that we were able to, you know, you were able to take what you had and, and put, you know, cobble together a perfect kind of flow for what we were trying to accomplish as a curriculum, um, as, as a, a big component of this learning opportunity. So it really did fit well and just kind of yes. a, te a testament yeah. to how you've gone about setting this training up to support end users. Oh, thank you. I think, yeah, I, I, you're right, because normally in our standard uh, tool that we have these learning paths that allow based on people's role and function and it allows them to go through these videos in a particular order. So if you're like an inventory manager or if you're a controller, these are the things that you need to go through. But what I always tell like uh, the customers, I always imagine these micro courses like these little Lego blocks and you can sort of build any experience that you like because they're so small and they're so precise. So when we sat down to think about what do we want our tech fluent cohort students or learners to learn about, we were able to easily pick and choose from the library and create these learning paths exactly matching to their needs. So I'm very excited to see what the feedback is going to be. So I know that 
And maybe this is also, um, you guys will put it into the, um, into the, uh, the description of the session, but the applications are open, definitely. Um, we encourage everybody to communicate or, you know, look around in their community if they see an opportunity for uh, some people to apply for it, they should definitely apply and see if they can be a part of it. Yeah, no, we'll definitely have that information in the in the in the comments and in the you know in the post for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I love the uh, analogy of the Lego blocks and just continuously building them, especially with you know today's technology and how it's ever changing, and you really have to stay on top of it for sure. Um, yes. And also, I think, oh, sorry, I was just going to say, I mean, there's a generational shift also, like, um, you know, uh, younger generation, I don't even want to call it the uh, new employees that are joining into workforce, they come from an environment of small videos, small chunks of information, so they want things to be available to them at the you know, tip of their fingers. So they don't want to just dig through or maybe have to go through a two, three day class to learn about a new product. So the small chunks of materials give you flexibility. When you have 30 minutes within your day and you want to just learn about certain topics, you can just log in and maybe be able to watch three, four, five of those. Or if you want to search and find exactly what you're looking for, this also allows you to do that easily. So I think it just ticks all of those boxes for the people that are looking for a more flexible option. But also I think it, um, it allows to cater into different types of learners, right? So every learner has a different sort of style. Some of us like to watch things, some of us like to listen, and some of us want that interaction with the instructor. But some of us are very shy and they're never gonna ask you a question in a classroom environment, but they can watch the same video five times to really learn about that particular you know, topics. So I think we, the companies need to understand the different sort of needs and offer different sort of options uh, to the learners so that you know, not one group gets nothing and everybody gets uh, something else. But I'm also a big advocate of uh, like classroom training. I'm never like, um, I think a blended approach is the best. So if you have some, some tools around online training, self-serve, and give opportunity into some one-on-one -on -one interaction, whether that's office hours, we usually recommend that to our customers. And I always also recommend them if they wanna have one-on-one, -on -one, you know, like a classroom sessions, and um, you do some exercises, answer some questions. Um, I think a combination of those really make it the best uh, experience for a customer who, you know, who's going through a D365 experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I, I heard out of there, I'm looking forward to uh, your TikTok D360, uh, D365 tips and tricks and trends. I can't wait for this. These, this is a super, uh, super micro uh, tidbits of, of Microsoft learning. <laughs> Uh, that's have, the next step. It's it's already a big job to uh, maintain 1,200 micro courses. You know, it's just uh, <laughs> because thanks to Microsoft, who likes to change things. Um, you know, um, especially now in the finance and operations yeah. at SCM, there's some visual changes that are happening. They're changing the product a little bit, how it sort of like looks and feels. Um, it's a big challenge for us because yeah. if we don't apply those changes. Um, you know, our courses look outdated. So yeah. it, it's a constant, um, constant work for us to go back and, um, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to Microsoft for, all, you know, adding a bunch of new functions and changing the technology and things like that. But at the same time, it is it is a pain in the tush. Just <laughs> list it that way. <laughs> yes. And you have, like you said, you have to keep them up. Like if it's a if it's a company making videos, likely they don't never update them. Like I've worked at companies no. and they do one video and it's the same thing. It's like yeah, just don't you'll get don't pay attention to the way it looks, but the function is still the same. But yes. but from an aesthetic, you can't do that. I mean, you yes. would, it would definitely impact your business. 
uh, you know, integrity at the end of the day to have outdated look and feel to the to the software. Yes, yeah, so. I mean, if something significant happens, like one, well, I'll give you one example. Like they all in one of the releases, they change something like the windows start what were like sliding from the left, and now they change it to slide from the right. And you know, like you cannot just immediately change like four hundred courses or whatever, or even right. hundred. We usually then record a separate sort of session and say there has been a change mm. um we are you know in the process of changing our videos but you will see that in many of the courses when uh the instructor says the uh the window is going to slide from the left that's what the video is going to show but when you go to d365 the, the window may actually uh slide from the right and uh, it's the same window, nothing changes, right. and give us some time to update everything, but you know, functionality does not change. So that seems to help out a little bit. At least they know that we know, yeah. um, and we're working on it. That's a good way to preface it, you know, preface it, is you getting into yes. it. Hey, before you watch, you know, kind of look at these kind of mm -hmm. addendums, if you will, to before yes. you jump in, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yes, yeah, but it's uh, been a fun, fun journey, so. Yeah. And I assume this is a, there's, I mean, what's, you know, have you talked about or have you kind of, you, you know, used any case studies with customers to come up with an ROI? Like when, when, it, when it's like, hey, here's why you should be doing this. You know, number one, it's good for your, your ecosystem. But what's, you know, what's the return on value for, for the organization? Yeah. I mean, I think overall, we always see, um, obviously, when people understand, so when a new, so it's a little bit different, like for, a brand new implementation versus an upgrade. So I think the value prop for both of them slightly different. So when you're doing a brand new D365 implementation, there's a lot of fear, anxiety around how the tool looks, is it gonna work? What my job is gonna be looking like? So having a tool available to the learners at their own time, at their own you know pace, really just takes that anxiety down and just you know makes it more real you know, instead of hypothetically talking about a system, it just they are able to see how specific things are being done using the software. So I think if I see that, I get that comment from the customers all the time. It really reduced to fear. It also sort of taps into this excitement because at the beginning of every implementation, there's big excitement and, it, you know, about a new uh, you know, project. Um, but a lot of the times those people are not even involved in the project, you know, all the way a little bit later. So by making them a part of a training initiative, you're just sort of tapping into that excitement and getting them uh, to start it on, um, on the, you know, on the learning process. And, and I always get this comment from the customers. They say that they can clearly see the people that are using the platform or separate or differentiate the people that are using the platform from the people who are not in the mm. meeting because they're a lot more vocal. They're asking questions. They understand because our goal is for making sure that they understand D365 so that they bring to the table their own knowledge about the business so that there's a better match between the D365 and, um, and what the, you know, ultimately that company needs from D365. So, um, and for the upgrade, I think even the ROI is, you know, even bigger because they already know AX, you know, obviously mm -hmm. AX has changed a lot to, to D365, but, you know, the nuts and bolts and this, you know, the basic stuff is still pretty similar, you know, sales order still has a header and lines and you still, you know, update inventory a certain way. So giving them access to D365 online training really fills in that gap and makes them understand um, D365 quickly because they already know AX. And as we know, and Bobby, you probably are very familiar with this, is all of the older AX projects are heavily customized because that's how the implementations were done. And a lot of the times customers don't know what is standard in their implement, you know, in their system. Yeah versus what's what's custom so by seeing the standard in d365 they're able to make that mental note oh like this is how the standard works and we may not need this you know this customization in our world so i think 
those sort of things are just the beginnings of the conversation uh, that I have with the customers. And um, it's been a great journey. I mean, it's music to my ears when I join a meeting and they're talking within themselves like, did you learn something new about the, you know, is the training giving you these things? And when, when I hear the learners talk about, yeah, like I did not know we could actually look up, you know, customers balances from this form and things like that. I'm like, Oh, that's yeah. so nice. Yeah. So training has always been, uh, I knew where my, um, career was going to end up being, even, even though I did many years of consultant. Yeah. Uh, it's it's what I love about, you know, just teaching specifically. Now I get to teach through videos to, to hundreds of people. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes. Very cool. Yeah, thank you. Bobby, you Bobby you're, you're a great, great trainer too. I know that you, you, um, I, I've been to a couple of your presentations. You definitely have the, the, the personality and the command to the, to the audience. I think that makes a big difference. Yeah, like I said, there's something valuable. That's why I love doing this educational sessions, and I've been doing it for years because I love, you know, if I have any bit of information to impart and somebody wants to listen, I'm happy if it's yes. two, two people in the room or, or 50. It's, it's, it's awesome to see a spark. Like you said, when you can see somebody, like, I, I don't know about you, but when I give a session, I, like I, my, my heart definitely you know swells a couple sizes when you see somebody scribbling things down or yeah. taking pictures, you know, so you know that they're not just looking at their phone or, you know, off in la la land, they're really engaging. And so there's always yes. people there doing it. So yeah, I, I really enjoy it. But even from the other side, I'm sure like Savannah, I don't know if you remember some trainers or teachers that you've had, you know, throughout your career that made an impact, you know, just uh, some people definitely have the knack for it to create that spark of different thinking and something new. And that sometimes makes a big impact in people's lives and careers as well. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Looking back, um, I think this is a trait that Bobby definitely exemplifies as well. Just being so relatable and um, charismatic during their presentations and things. It just really engages the audience. I think that's a very important thing to have with it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Ooh, Bobby, did you have any other questions or things for Alif? No, I think uh, unless, unless you have anything else you know, about training. I think we really appreciate having you on to talk about training. It's an important topic. I mean, obviously it's mm -hmm. a passion for you. It's a passion for us at Ellipse. We, you know, we, we come to market as an educational company. We, yes. do, we do everything we do in community because the number one thing is we want to, we want to provide good education and good value to, to the community. And, and that just has so many benefits, you know, yeah. down, down the, down the road. So yeah. we, 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 you know, as a company, we've embraced that. And so we appreciate yes. having you on to talk more about it. No, I think, I think what I would, you know, when I talk to especially young people, I try to like convey to them. I think there's a lot of misunderstandings about technology and to different technology jobs out there even. So um, because I think technology as a word can be sort of like scary because a lot of the times it's equ it is equated with like coding and then you have to be like just writing a code and but technology i mean that that of course or also exists you know that's a big part of technology and you can be a part of that sort of um uh, part but um there are a lot of so many there are so many other career options and jobs that are sort of partially technology uh but still very human and you get to work with people and you get to work with um you know um implementations so i'm always uh, an advocate in talking to young people is like when somebody says oh i'm not really like very technical i'm like you don't have to be i personally did not study engineering i'm a business major but I was always really good at organizing things. You know, Bobby, you, you probably know. <laughs> what? <Huh? laughs> organizing things, taking charge, you know, those are some of the things. And, um, and uh, you know, soon enough, I figured out I'm, I'm really good at, like, project managing. And, uh, and, um, and then I had sort of an interest and passion about um, implementations and technology change. But... I mean, I, if you ask me like how to like make something work technically, I am, I'm just 
painfully ignorant you know so like i have to ask someone like uh, about how oh, to make the 365 mobile app work you know like it's not like my realm at all but i get help on that side but you know how to use the mobile app to do your job that's when you know i can be helpful to you and i think um i hope the younger people especially girls um uh, are can see the potential in this and they have a room and space in this in this uh, technology world uh, if they even though they don't want to be really super techie but more stay on the functional side and 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 contribute in a different way um uh to to this uh you know small world of uh technological improvement for enterprises or different businesses yeah well said I think Savannah's got some fun questions for us to end our, our session. We Since the last time we talked, we've added something we call the fast four or five okay. or three, whatever, but just some fun questions. So Sounds good. Yeah. So, and yeah, Bobby, you can answer as well if you want, but kind of at the beginning of this podcast, we talked about um, you traveling and things. So what's been your favorite trip that you've ever taken, if you had to pick? Ah, uh, okay. Favorite trip. Um, I would say probably, so I'm originally from Turkey, born and raised. So I would say that's not really fair to say Turkey because I've been to Turkey. I mean, I grew up there, but since I moved back to United States almost 30 years ago, I also go every summer. I would say probably Turkey is the my my favorite out of all of them because it offers such a variety of different experiences you can do a beach you can do a history you can do mountains um but outside of my sort of like native uh country i would probably say new zealand now that yeah um, that's, <laughs> that's just sort of added to the to the list yes yeah. in turkey just may I, i'll tell you mine and say but but just the history and, and we think of history here in the states is like you know it goes back a little bit we're still going back you know 500 years plus right and then if you go with indigenous folks a lot deeper but man the history in turkey in that area is just that's like world like bc type history you know oh yes it's yes. serious we, you know yes. we have a funny story because we went to this archaeology museum with but we had some guests from united states we were like we visited and everything and there were two lions in front of the door of the archaeology museum and you know, kids are playing on it, like hugging, and my kids were little, and like my son is sitting on it, and we're like, we don't know, how old are these things? You know, it's literally like on the open. Oh, 5,000 years old. And uh, literally, it's just like uh, laying and, you know, for yeah. because there's so many of it. Yeah. It's really unfortunate. I don't know. It's um, Maybe it's an unfortunate thing. It's sort of a little bit taken granted, but it's yeah. definitely a, a country to visit. You should yeah. come, Bobby. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I've got so many countries on my bucket list. Uh, the most recent trip for me, though, I, I took a driving trip in, in the Northwest. I had never done that. And so it, through Seattle and Washington and into Vancouver, Canada, it was just perfect weather, perfect time of the year. It just, you know, it was really fun way to just kind of drive and, and see a bunch of sites in that area. So I, that was kind of top of mind for me. Nice. Those both sound very fun. I've never yet been out of the country, so yeah. <laughs> well, I will be soon. Um, I would say you're going for your honeymoon, right? Yeah, <laughs> to St. Lucia. So that'll be my first time. I had to get my um, passport for the first time. Nice. Ever, so that's exciting. But yeah. I think that's a big hurdle step. If you have your passport, now you have to go to places. Right, you got to get stamped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I have a goal to get some things on those pages. <laughs> Well, cool. Um, the next question I have, um, what is the best or maybe funniest memory you have at like a community event, whether that's Summit or any of the other ones? Um, okay, yeah, I have one. And I think I I told a story maybe, I don't know if you Bobby know this. So in my first um, uh, Summit session, I submitted my Summit session and it was in um, this was in, uh, it will come to me which city it was in. I think it was in Phoenix. Yeah, it was in Phoenix, yeah. So I submitted my session. I waited nothing, you know, just I basically got no response, no nothing. And then I'm like, okay, well, I guess 
they didn't like my session. So I go into the event and it was uh, my first event and I attended as an attendee. You know, I went through the whole thing and um, and the last day I, I, we were like, it was a great experience. I'm like, next year for sure, I'm going to try again. And I drive back to the airport. I'm sitting at the, the, the club or whatever and my phone rings. And then I pick up and Pam is on the other side and Pam is like a, one of the organizer. And she's like, Elif, where are you? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm at the airport. And she's like, well, everybody's here waiting for your session. And I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? And uh, she's like, oh yeah, and the room is full. Oh <laughs> no. Like, Won't you put a nail on the coffin for me? And I'm like, what do you mean? Oh, like I found out of course later on that my session got approved. It got put into the schedule. Never received an email, oh, never no. received anything. And I have a feeling why, because my uh, email has this dot co at the end. I think uh, whatever has happened probably oh. went into the wrong email. So the nice thing is some volunteers got up and did a presentation about training to the group. And, uh, <laughs> and Pam's like, I'm so sorry, next time uh, we will do it the right way. And uh, we did plan, but then the next time COVID happened. No. But that was... Um, as soon as I hang up that phone, I'm like, I need a gin and tonic. So <laughs> that, was the, that was really the um, a little bit of a fun. I don't know if you, I would call it a fun, but definitely an interesting, memorable, a for memorable sure. community event experience. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm going to throw one out that, that was uh, the first uh, summit I went to, and it was in Vegas. And they had a, at one of the events, they had a, um, a Rat Pack impersonation group. So Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and Sammy Davis Jr. And they did a whole show. And afterwards, uh, they, they hung around. And so I spent about an hour and a half talking to Sammy Davis Jr. And the guy was so good that he would flip back and forth. Like if I asked him a question, I was like, let me ask you a question. And, but you were as Sammy Davis. And he, I would ask him and he would answer as Sammy. And then we'd go back to talking. We were from the same area. So we had a lot in common. So we talked a lot about the East Coast. But then I would just kind of quiz him every once in a while. And he just flipped right. And they would fly, he flew around the country, like this whole group. Like they would fly around. Sometimes you would be with a different Sammy, De a different Dean Martin and a different Frank Sinatra. Like it wasn't the same group, but they would just say, hey, we need a Sammy Davis. And they would pull him in or whatever, you Aww. know. How fun. Kind of fun. Yeah, it was kind of fun. That is fun. Wait, there should be more impersonators at the summit events. What happened? I, we, yeah. need, we need more impersonators. We need for sure. more impersonators. Yeah. 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 What? Last year we tried having like a Ricky Bobby impersonator. We were, I wanted so hard to have a Ricky Bobby impersonator in Charlotte. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been fun. Yeah. You'll Maybe. get a Bobby impersonator in Denver for, for DineCon. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be an easy one, right? Yeah. 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 Cool. <laughs> Well, my last question is pretty simple. Um, if you could be any animal, what would you be and why? I would probably like to be a bird, some form of bird, you know. Yeah. So I'd probably like flying would be super fun and going to different places. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I immediately thought bird. Like with you, I'm not. I'm not sure what bird. I'd have to give that some deeper thought. Like anyway, yeah. like a, a bird of prey, or or just kind of a sweet little tweety bird, or you know, <laughs> or, or a woodpecker would be kind of a, that'd be hard because you're whacking your head all the time. Yeah, but, but, yeah, 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 definitely flying or some type of bird would be my yeah. choice as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that too. That'd be very cool. Yeah. But, cool. Well, those are all the silly little questions I have for you guys. <laughs> but, awesome. That was fun. Yeah. But, yeah. Alif, thanks again for joining us. Like Bobby said, we really appreciate you taking your time and just chatting with us. This is great. Oh, thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, uh, I, I get to do these maybe a couple of times a year. It's always fun to just sort of connect and talk about training. I can probably talk about it for hours. So thank you for <laughs> having me. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just wonderful to be a part of a, a bigger community um, and be a part of this. Mm -hmm. yep. And I'll, I'm sure I'll see you soon with like yes. in, in the next couple of days. <laughs> we'll be Tomorrow picking to sessions. Be exact. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. All right. Yes. Uh, a lot of work to be done in the community now. The busy season is starting, right? You bet. Um, you bet. Yeah. Running the gauntlet. Yes, for sure. Awesome. Thank well, you guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. See you Take guys. Take care. Bye.